Before we begin working with the plants, let's look on some settings. So right here we have our open interface for plant factory and we are actually in basic mode. So I recommend for you to switch to advanced mode so we have a little bit more access to specific properties. From basic mode, if you have a screen look like this, it's easy to switch. Just go to advanced mode and click to select. Also, you can go from display, workspace, and from workspace, you can select advanced mode. You could also customize your mode and save and preload it your workspace after. So let's go ahead and click on advanced. And you'll notice as we change, we have it our preview, our nodes, parameters for the nodes and some materials. I'm going to little bit readjust the screen. So I'll take my materials down right now and move also my preview mode. What I want to pay attention more display it's to the our node area where we're going to connect them and also to our properties per each node mode as we're going to select. Very fast look on the interface on top we have a fast toolbar with primary function. On the left, we have a toolbar with most useful nodes and other elements we can insert into our. You also can access nodes by right click in a node panel and select from here. Mostly what we're going to do is a hand on working as with project. So as we progress, we learn more and more about this interface. I found that this is a better way to learn a um, new application by doing something with it. Okay, if we look basic on our uh, plan factory, we always start with a root. A root is center point, which is invisible at this, but it is what anchor our plan to specific place. By adding different elements to our, we can create it or tree if we go to geometric and geometric and we'll go select um, trunk segment so we can add more to the kind of root point we can also add a um, stem if we do flowers other elements and this is majority only two two elements if you look in nature it's what we have it however I will say with plant factory or with 3d we have it actually 30 element which is could create like a patch of grass Technical grass is just a single stem going out. But I found when you work and you want to populate a large areas with like moss example or with other ones, it's much easier to create a bunch of them or a clump of and use this in the future or several going out. So for this, we're actually going to use a different ones segments so we can use it or um, Hydra or so we're going to use different. Let me show the example and different on this. So first, if we're going trunk segment, we're creating additional nodes. If you're not familiar with node system, the here is very fast overview. So from the root or from one element, you can connect to different elements and you're connecting by selecting connect point and drag and notice as I'm dragging, it is expand and allowed me to connect to different element. In some cases, it will prompt you what you want to connect. Usually because no connections, we connect to input zero. And as we connect, you notice in our preview, we instantly have it our plant. Let's go ahead and select and we'll go to zoom on entire plant so we can preview everything. Right here, we have it our plant viewable. You could rotate and look around by hold down Alt or Option key, left click, and we can rotate. Middle click, can pan. And of course, if we do right click, we can zoom in out. This is will happen if you hold down Alt or Option key. And you will hold your mouth in the windows of the preview. So let's go back to our notes. Notice right here, we have our root connect to our trunk. As we're connecting our point root, we have it our trunk appear. And as notice with a trunk, because it's going with a tree, we have it somewhat a root system on the bottom. It's not the roots itself, but it's more what is blending with the roots. 
it is possible for us to add additional element and make our roots looking like they're going over the ground. So let's go ahead. This is one trunk. So let's go right now, delete it. We can highlight and click delete button. Next, I'm going to right click geometry and we're going to select stem segment. Let's connect our root to the stem. We'll again connect to input zero. And as we're connecting, notice right here, teeny tiny, it's not as big as a tree, but it's smaller up here because it tried to set right sizes for us. Speak about the sizes and set properly. I would recommend before you start your project, going to file options. And inside the options, you'll notice in general preference, we have it units and units currently set to the meters. So if I work, for example, with the trees, I probably set to the meters on this one unit or one point will affect as one meter. If I work with the plants, I probably will switch to centimeters. So in this case, one unit or one element will relate it to one centimeters. For example, if I do dandelions, there may be somewhere from four to maybe about 10 inches height. So for me, it will be easy. I know number 10 will represent 10 inches or centimeters in this case. And of course, I can switch to imperial if I need to do it. So let's go with metrical. So it will represent with centimeters. And of course, if I'm going to switch, create a moss, what are we going to do? Some, we'll go to millimeters because it's a small and moss can be anywhere from 5, 10, maybe 15, even millimeters going. So we'll go in millimeters. It will be much easier for us to work with. That is, does not reflect how elements will showing in our preview mode. However, it will represent when we're exporting and saving. So it will be right sizes for our plants. For now, let's go back to original meter settings. Right here, it will located in option, general preferences in a units area. Let's click OK. So right here is our stem and you can see it's selecting one. Let's see what's happening. Actually, let me zoom in again so we can see the stem closer. What's happening if we're going and we go to geometry and create another stem segment. Let's go connect that stem segment from the root. We'll use the one. Notice it is going from same point. However, because our some elements will be randomly applied, you can see on the top, it's actually two stamps we gave it, but they are coming from same single point. And if I'm going to create a, like a grass patch or other things, that is not necessarily will work for me. So for this reason, we actually want to have, we can create different point how we work with our stamps. And this is what I said, it not necessarily in nature will have this, but I do think in a 3D will have it almost three different elements. We can in plant factory example, we can use it. We'll go to geometry and let's go create a hydra primitive. So now we'll go from root connecting to our hydra and notice it's nothing happened because hydra does not necessarily have it elements. It's only display in an area how it will go to distribute them. Now, if we're going back to geometry, and we'll create a stem segment, same like before. Let's now connect stem segment. Notice what's happened. Okay, let's go to on our plant. Our stems is spread around in a circle. This element, what do you see around? This is where our hydra is located. To properly point them in right directions or how we want to do it, we need to go inside the Hydra properties. For this, if we click on the Hydra, you notice below we have a special properties where we have a number, how many we want to display, currently 12. For example, if we have it 60, just be crazy, you can see we have 60 stamps repeating around there. We also can specify scale and radius. So if we reduce radius to 0 0.5, it's a shrink of our Hydra. So it is affecting how the element look. We also have additional properties and important that we have it also our transform that we can modify. 
uh, how going and as well we can modify with angles how we want to display for example right now i'm switching to 70 about 70 degrees and you can see our stamp start going up this way we can start playing around and create some elements that may be going punch around grass and other so the overall here's a very kind of overview about those elements now as we're speaking let me go ahead geometry and just show what different on a orange will be different between two of them one you can see it just uh, going on the radius of the circle so let's go to disconnect from here and disconnect we can just select the node click delete key and we'll go from root connect to urge notice it's now a circle which is very useful if we want to do some other plans and we'll go connect stem back to this and you notice now it's going around our sphere just imagine how you can use it you can use this to create it anything from the weird viruses to maybe dandelions or other plants coconut whatever you wanted but it is distributed this way so we can use it this as distribution of the additional elements also if you look around you see i connect hydra and urge to the stem so it is a lot of node system allowed me to create a very weird combinations notice again flowing is going from our left element root to the hydra to the stem and again from root to the urge to the stem stem is our reusable node which it can reuse by two hydra and urge this proper of the node to using this way allowed us to have a very good flexibility to create um, multiple reusable components as well in creating a simple uh, logical loops for example if we go inside the loop we can also create a repeat next create our loop and make it stem repeating several times to build branches for our trees so right here is our basic overview of the elements Hydra before we actually start to work with uh, creating plants. So let's go ahead in the next video we actually start creating some very basic plants.